Uh, actually, we had a very strong and resilient 2021. Uh, we returned to growth in the second half of the year, which was uh, a little bit better than I think uh, many had expected. Uh, that, together with, with good, strong growth in our underlying businesses, is very encouraging. Uh, as you point out in your header, we had some, uh, we made some adjustments in Q4, non, non-cash charges, uh, which were, were no big surprise, I don't think, and uh, and very understandable. Uh, but the underlying momentum of the business is strong, and maybe more importantly, uh, we announced a series of actions that we're taking today to make sure that we can get to our 10% return on tangible equity target, I think, sooner than uh, than most people had expected. So by 2024, and we're going to do that by focusing on the way that we allocate capital, starting with a $750 million buyback today, and and an increasing dividend. Uh, we talked about the steps we're taking to improve the, the returns on our key corporate banking business, our, our CCIB business, uh, together with productivity steps that we're taking across the board, and a stepped-up investment in, in some of our key growth markets, not least China, where we think we can double our profits. So uh, I would think that, that on balance, uh, our shareholders will look at our, our resilient performance in 2021, a, a solid start to 2022, and the very concrete actions that we're taking to accelerate our transformation and, and get to the, uh, to, to the targeted return levels uh, sooner than the market had been expecting as a, as a very good thing. Bill, there are things you can control and there are things that you can't control. And you can't control the pattern of Omicron and the way authorities are dealing with it in the respective emerging economies that you operate in. Could you just share with us some some thoughts about that and to what extent many of those economies like China that look like leaders in the pandemic's early stages now seem to be a little bit of a drag on global activity? What's your read on the Omicron story and its impact on you over the first half of this year. Yeah, you, you, you're absolutely right that this this uh, this virus is is if anything unpredictable and uh, and pervasive. So uh, we're, we're clearly feeling a, uh, a drag in the short term in Hong Kong. Uh, Hong Kong has had a surge in cases as we've seen. Uh, we've had about a third of our branches uh, closed. That's common across the banking industry as a health precaution. And, uh, and that will clearly have some impact on activity in the early part of the year. Uh, China, by contrast, is, it continues to be very strong. But of course, China itself is, is a tale of, of two cities. There's actually reasonable underlying growth. It's still a driver of global growth. Uh, and we expect will continue to be so to, to an, in an outsized way over the coming years. Uh, but at the same time, we know that there's real, there were pressures in particular in the commercial real estate market. And uh, we took some impairments in the first quarter, fourth quarter uh, with, uh, with, with some overlay provisions as well, recognizing some of the risks there. But despite that, despite the, the, the provisions and, uh, and the overlay, uh, we had a substantial increase in our profits in Hong Kong and are projecting further increase. So, uh, yes, Omicron is with us. Uh, yes, it, it is continuing to wreak havoc on communities where we operate. There will be some economic impact, and there is already, uh, but we think that's relatively short term. And of course, we're encouraged by the re- relatively quick recoveries that we've seen in other markets that have had their Omicron wave, uh, not least the UK and the US. Hi, Bill. It's Karen jumping in. I just wanted to ask you about the impact of interest rates. I can see in the commentary today, 5 to 7% underlying growth and a further 3% from rising interest rates. Just what does that 3% take into account in terms of the rate hikes we've already had and anticipated moves elsewhere by central banks, uh, including the Fed, of course, the one everyone's watching? Yeah, no, it's, 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 thank you for calling that out because we do see good, strong underlying growth. And we're not relying on interest rates to, to get us to our 10% target, although clearly uh, the, the, the market projected increase in interest rates will get us there faster. In fact, what we talk about and is, is an incremental 3% growth on our top line in addition to the 5 to 7% uh, that we can generate X the interest rate increase, which, by the way, is consistent with what we've generated if we can sort of draw a line through, the, uh, through our performance over the past couple of years. So uh, it's been a challenge to pin this one down because each time we come up with a new set of of targets, interest rates have gone up a little bit further. Uh, So we we were clear in our communications this morning uh, that the the scenario that we used to make our statement about up to 8 to 10 percent growth, including interest rates, uh, assumed four rate hikes this year. Now, the market obviously is assuming more than that and then more again next year. Uh, So we'll see. Uh, we'll see. We're not running our business for interest rates. We're running our business to optimize our operating performance. But interest rates are clearly providing a very good tailwind for us, should these rate rises materialize. Uh, Bill, we're getting a sense from central bankers that this time might be a little bit different in terms of the pace of rate hikes, and that we may see a more aggressive tightening from certain central banks. But 
is it different when we take a look at the interest rate sensitivity of customers? We know there's still a lot of debt from some customers. Do you think that there is a level at which mortgages, credit cards, other loans start to get impacted by interest rate rises? Yeah, there's always there's always the risk that that interest rate rises will uh, have a material dampening effect on economic activity. Of course, part of the reason the central banks raise interest rates is to have some sort of a dampening effect on economic activity. So the idea that we could get a free pass here is uh, is not an idea that we should entertain. But let's keep in mind as well that we still have very negative real interest rates in uh, in most of the markets, certainly in which we operate, uh, and they return to something in the two to two and a half percent range. Uh, which would which would be a qu quite a substantial increase from where we are right now. In fact, a little bit more than what the market is priced in would just get us back to probably still a stimulative monetary policy. But I think most would say closer to neutral. So uh, we don't see a material economic impact in terms of credit losses uh, in the in the in the scenarios that we're looking at in terms of interest rates. Of course, if inflation uh, continues to to run away. Not our forecast, but if it did and we had a more, more substantial increase in interest rates, of course we'd be looking at, at uh, the impact on the underlying economy.